Hi, my name is Maeve Mulrennan. I am the curator in Galway Arts Centre. Today, an artist, Siobhan McGibbon, and me are going to answer some questions about what it's like to be an artist and what it's like to be a curator. Hello, I'm Siobhan McGibbon. I'm a visual artist based in West Cork. So Siobhan, I'm going to start by asking you a question that came from Bobby. And he's asking, what is the best thing about being an artist? Spending time thinking about things that really interest you are forming a question and then answering that question through different materials. So for example, a couple of years ago, I worked on a project with Maeve in the Galway Arts Centre in a group show called Death Drive. And I was thinking about what does it mean to be normal? What is a normal body? What is the future of normal? And I was answering these questions with materials like fingernails and human hair and wax and fiberglass. And it's just really exciting to experiment with different kinds of materials and put on exhibitions. I think that's the best thing about being an artist. It's really, really interesting. And we worked together again on a different exhibition, Human Being and Human Becoming. And you use different materials there because you were, you were asking different questions. That's right, yeah. Was experimenting with collage and with body casting. I created workshops in the school and the school children also experimented with these materials. Callum is asking, how do you come up with ideas for your work? Every time it's different, but I do spend a lot of time thinking about what I'm interested in, reading books about what I'm interested in. I am really interested in biology, so sometimes I go and I work with scientists or in the laboratory, observing what they're doing. And then I go back to my studio and I think about all these ideas and all these observations, and I think about how to explore these ideas with materials. And through this, my ideas evolve. And do you think if you make one sculpture, then maybe that gives you an idea for the next one? Yes, definitely. Each uh, work builds upon the next one. So you can, you can often see an idea growing through all my works. Matthew has a really good question. How do you not rage quit or do you? <laughs> I love this question, Matthew. I think that it can be hard sometimes when you're in the studio and say something breaks or something is not working out the way you want it to work out, not to rage quit. Mm. Um, but I, I, never, I never really do rage quit. I might go away from the studio and go back when I am feeling more positive, more calm. I think about my degree show, which is the exhibition you have at the end of college. And at the time, I was working with lard, which is fat, which is like a white butter. And I made this really big sculpture and I implanted hair in the sculpture, one by one. Um, and one day I went in, five days before my show, and my sculpture had melted to the ground. And it took me seven weeks to make, which is like the entire summer holidays. If you yeah. think about it, it's every day working on a sculpture and then it melted. And that day I felt like rage quitting. Yeah. But I didn't. I went home and I made a plan. I problem solved and I remade the sculpture in five days. So um, I felt like rage quitting, but I didn't. <laughs> Sometimes I think other things can really upset you or stress you out and you feel like it in the moment, but when you think about it, is that gonna help? Sometimes it does actually just let an awful little bit of steam and then calming down. But I think never giving up is something that a lot of artists see as just something that they do. They just never, ever give up. Matthew has a question here. Has your artwork ever embarrassed you because it was so bad? <laughs> yeah. No, but not at the time. I think now I look back at some artworks and I think, gosh, that was embarrassing um, because my skills have developed so much that I would never make those choices now. Mm. Um, but saying that, I know that I had to make those choices or those mistakes to get to where I am now. You know, every time I make a piece of art, it gets better. 
my expression gets better. Um, so yes, I have been embarrassed, but um, it's all part of the process. Hugh is asking, how did you get to be so good at art and do you need lessons? I think it, learning is a never ending process. Uh, I went to art college and a lot of artists go to art college, but not all of them. And it's a, it's a time when you get to experiment with all the different disciplines because I'm a sculptor. I think when you're younger, you think that being an artist means being a painter, but you could be a ceramicist or textiles or digital media, animation, film. And it's during college that you really develop your skills, but it doesn't stop after college. I work with so many different materials and each time I start making a work, I'm developing my skills and I'm getting better and better and better. Well, one of the, the um, ways you make work now is animation and you didn't learn that in college, did you? No, I didn't. I actually did a weekend workshop in Lorg in Galway and that started off my exploration into animation. So now I do cutout animation and digital animation and stop motion animation and claymation. Yeah, that's something that I learned after college. Do you ever look up things on YouTube? Yeah, YouTube's great. You can learn so much from, from YouTube. So yeah, you can learn you can learn from college or YouTube or from working with other people workshops um, mm -hmm. Bobby wants to know what does a curator do I'm a curator in Galway Art Centre I work with visual artists and I choose different artists to exhibit their artwork in our gallery so in the gallery you go in at any time during the year and there is an exhibition there it changes every couple of months I pick the artists and then when those artists are making new work I talk to them I go and do studio visits and we see where the artwork goes and what makes sense to the audience coming in. And sometimes I curate group shows and that's a lot of different artists together. And sometimes it's a solo show. And a solo is just one artist. So if I was working on a solo exhibition, I would be working with that artist for maybe a year. Not every single day, but it would take an artist about a year to do all the work for a solo show. I spend a lot of my day talking to people about art. It's brilliant. Sammy would like to know, how do you curate something? It's something that changes depending on what you're doing. So I'm the kind of curator who works in a gallery. I work in Galway Art Centre. Other curators work in different spaces all the time. The primary thing for me to think about is what looks best in Galway Art Centre's gallery. We have maybe eight exhibitions a year. We work with different festivals like Bobro um, International Arts Festival Children and we do a mix of solo exhibitions and group exhibitions. I would usually approach the artist but sometimes they would send me in images of their work and their CV and they would write a letter talking about what their interests are and what the work that they're going to be making is. Sometimes I would work with artwork that's already being made and then other times you're working with something that hasn't been made yet. So those conversations are quite strange because you're talking about something that doesn't exist yet. And you're talking about something that could turn out differently than what anybody expected. I also have to think about the audience in Galway Arts Centre. We would have people who come to every show. Then we have people during the summer, usually that are in Galway on their holidays. And then we have school kids coming in. So I'm making sure that every one of those is coming and seeing something that really interests them. So you'd have different types of exhibitions. Cole would like to know, mm -hmm. how do you know that people are going to like the art that you've picked? Um, you can't guarantee it. Sometimes you think something is brilliant and other people just aren't very interested in it. So you would curate different types of work, different types of artists throughout the year. And you also try and be objective. So being objective is thinking that not everything you like is the best thing, that other people like different things. So an example would be the, the movie Frozen. You might not necessarily like it, or you might think it's okay, but it's not the best. Whereas other people think it's the best thing ever. So you have to see that there's lots of different types of people and there's lots of different types of art. So you just try your best and you, you show different things. 
Yeah, that's exactly right. I'm, I'm sure that I like art that you don't like so much and you like yeah. art that I don't like so much. Yeah. Yeah. Not everyone's going to like it. It doesn't mean that it's bad. No, you can see if something is well made or if there's good ideas, but sometimes things, they don't excite you in the way that another artwork would. Gasper asks, would you consider putting my self-portrait in the gallery? I would. Gaspar's self-portrait is really, really cool and he's he's worked with lots of different materials and he's worked with things that you can find around your house as well. So yeah, like what I would do is I would have a conversation with Gaspar. I would say, okay, well, are we going to have a solo exhibition? Do you have other work? Or are we going to have a big self-portrait group exhibition with maybe other boys in your school or other artists? And then we figure out different things like what work goes beside yours or what goes opposite yours or what's the first thing the audience see when they come into the gallery. Do we want the gallery to be dark or do we want it to be maybe a different colour? So we have all these conversations and then I would curate the Galway Art Centre show around the answers that he gives me. Thanks, Maeve, for answering those questions and telling us what it's like to be a curator and all your work in the Galway Art Centre. Thanks very much, Juan, for um, coming on and answering questions about what it's like to be an artist. Thanks to the boys who've asked all these really, really amazing questions. And I hope you guys at home um, know a little bit more about what it's like to be an artist and what it's like to be a curator. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.